Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hao Tran. Of course, you recognize me every weekend and week out. Um, just a small plug for the Vietnamese edition of the show too. Check out our host Miro, who's hosting guests on the Vietnamese edition of the show. Um, he's got some great episodes lined up uh, and those past uh, filmed as well. So make sure to check out that. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Meanwhile, on my show. Um, anyways, uh, we are very pleased to be welcoming my guest. He's he's coming from overseas actually, uh, but his company Matrixport that he represents is a global company with a pretty big presence here in Vietnam, and they're doing some really cool initiatives for the Vietnam market. And we want to talk about those today, especially in relation to the space that they're operating in, um, personal finance, crypto, blockchain, just a lot of related areas. Um, I'll let Cavi kind of explain more about that though. Uh, Cavi, welcome to the show. Amazing, thank you so much for having me, yes. especially so early on in the morning. Of course, <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, we're here in the very leafy garden of the Viet Cetera studio in the midst, uh, in the middle of Ho Chi Minh City. And I understand it's, uh, you know, just recently you've joined Matrix Port and, and you've been in the space for a long time though. I've been like. in the space for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. So and, I've been um, a player for about two and a half years. Okay. Um, There's a lifetime in this. Space. It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The industry moves so fast. Mm. Um, but I've been with Matrix Port just a very short time, but yep. it's a fantastic organization and they're doing some very uh, amazing, innovative things mm. uh, to deliver value for customers. Yeah. And, you know, two and a half years in the space and, and now you're a matrix port. Yeah. What was the pull that brought you into this company? Was it the, the growth, the expansion, their, you know, their interest in emerging markets? What is that? So for me, it's yeah. always about understanding the fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? And I think what matrix port is trying to do is they're trying to build an ecosystem for investors around the world. So whether mm -hmm. you're an institutional investor, whether you're a retail investor, whether mm -hmm. you're, uh, you have uh, or are looking for an early opportunity to invest in crypto assets uh, or any form of digital assets, uh, or if you're looking uh, for an opportunity to build out your portfolio. Mm. Um, I think Matrix Port offers a solution for everyone. And it's a, they have a number of innovative products uh, that they've built that I don't think anyone in the space is really effectively looking mm. at. Um, I mean, I think the company was one of the first to bring out dual currency, which is a fantastic product and it allows users to earn a passive income. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it was one of the sort of key things that, that really excited me about the opportunity to work at Matrix Port. Okay, yeah. excellent. Well, uh, before we go more deep dive into the products of Matrix Port and understand what you guys uh, truly focus on, I'd love to hear about your role. Exactly, Kavi. Uh, it's been a short time. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the, the role changes every single day as it does with uh, the space. That's right. Um, but maybe you can share about what you're doing at Matrix Sport and what your responsibilities are. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I oversee uh, global marketing and communications efforts. Mm. Um, so everything from growth, uh, the company's reputation, public relations. Um, uh, I also su support the team when it comes to um, I guess accessing the products um, and building out those products to ensure that they are uh, of value to our customers. So mm -hmm. almost dipping them in the community um, to get that or gather that community feedback, make sure we are innovative, innovating for the right cause. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess uh, it, it does change on a day-to-day -day basis. There's always new things happening. I didn't expect myself to be in, in Vietnam today, mm -hmm. um, but it, again, beautiful place. Um, great opportunity here. The market is, is absolutely booming. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, and what about your background before joining Matrix Port? You, you, you shared you were in the space for two and a half years. Uh, right. What were those companies and areas that you were working in? Uh, so my former company, I was actually at Cake DeFi. Mm -hmm. So Cake DeFi is a CDFi platform. Centralized access to decentralized financial applications and services. Um, and again, very similar to Matrix Port, they enable users to generate a yield off their crypto assets and investments. Mm -hmm. um, and they're powered by DeFi Chain, which is a very interesting and exciting project in the blockchain space. Uh, it's a layer one protocol built on Bitcoin rather than uh, on Ethereum. Mm. Um, so uh, again, very, very innovative, very, very different. Um, and I was with them for I think, just under a couple of years or a year and a half. Um, again, I looked at uh, global marketing and communications, um, effectively grew the company to a million users within a year. Um, but they've built up a lot of equity within the indus industry. Mm. Um, and you see a lot of customer feedback uh, in terms of, uh, well, positive news about how the investments in the platform mm -hmm. have enabled users to take a holiday, buy a car, pay for a wedding, pay for their child university or, or, or higher education fees, uh, pay off debt even. Um, and it's just wonderful to see. and. 
uh, you know, the crypto market has, it, to a certain degree, there are a lot of negative news. There's a lot of negative news out there. Um, and to see the, the, the sort of, you know, the opposite side of it, mm. um, where crypto is actually enabling uh, wealth creation, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just fantastic to see. So, um, yeah, I was there for about a year and a half. And prior to that, I was at Bybit um, as their chief editor. So looking after all their own content, Basically. marketing and operations. Uh, so I've been in the space for a little little bit of time, yeah. uh, and I've been an active investor since I want to say 2017, mm. 2018. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, you mentioned about the the negativity around it, and you know, a lot of people they, they don't look outside of the box a little bit. I mean, the entire financial markets are in a bit of a turmoil at the moment, and this is normal. These are cycles that people the markets go through. Um, and uh, if you look at some of the dips in the uh, equities market, the stock market, it's actually even more. Uh, than crypto. So That's I think right. um, just put in perspective, you know, just put it out there. I think um, everyone's kind of going through tough times, but uh, for those companies that are resilient and, and can make it through, um, surely good times are ahead, especially for the industry as well. Absolutely. Couldn't yeah. agree with you more. Couldn't awesome. agree with you more. And you, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Mm. It is very sort of cyclical. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen these phases happen every three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. um, they are getting a little bit closer together. So they're, yeah. they're a little bit more compact now. Yeah. Um, and the markets are correlating ever so closely. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're now seeing the impact on traditional financial markets as well as the digital asset market. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, I, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's, mm -hmm. it's sort of anyone's guess. The market moves so fast mm -hmm. um, that we can expect to see more and more of these sort of tangible connections mm -hmm. uh, over the coming years. Right, right. Um, let's take a step back a little bit too and talk about uh, Matrix Port itself. Um, I understand it's one of Asia's fastest growing digital asset financial services That's right. uh, companies. That's um, uh, what, what are some milestones recently that that kind of highlight that for Matrix Port? Um, so Matrix Port is definitely one of uh, Asia's fastest growing uh, crypto or digital asset management mm -hmm. companies. Um, it enables access to crypto. It's um, we have over ten billion dollars. We do have a number of high profile investors. Mm -hmm. uh, we successfully raised our Series C funding mm -hmm. uh, at $100 million, which gives us a unicorn status, Okay. Um, which I guess sort of uh, backs up uh, from a credibility standpoint to yeah. showcase that um, one, the company was able to uh, raise such funds mm -hmm. uh, and also the investment backing uh, proves that there is significant trust mm -hmm. uh, in Matrix Port as an organization to mm -hmm. effectively grow uh, within the ecosystem. Especially institutional investment, that's uh, the key driver of a lot of the growth, hopefully, to come in market. So. That's right. I think we have uh, between sort of 60 and 70 real big key mm. institutional players invested in our platform. OK. Um, and that is definitely an opportunity that we're looking to explore mm -hmm. a little bit further down the line as well. So you, we talked about uh, some of the turmoil the markets in general are going through right now. What's the long term value of digital assets? And maybe you can share that from uh, a, Vietnam, a Vietnamese perspective, uh, those especially retail or institutional are looking to get in. What's the value for, for these kind of players? Um, the value is exponential. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that Vietnam is an incredibly bustling space, uh, especially for crypto. Um, there's a lot of interesting data. I was reading something on AAAI uh, just the other day, uh, which highlighted that uh, around 7% of uh, the Vietnamese population own a crypto asset. Mm -hmm. And over 95%, I believe, are looking at opportunities in the crypto space. Um, so you can definitely see that there's an appetite, uh, mm -hmm. especially amongst the retail investors. Uh, in Vietnam. Um, in terms of the longevity and the, the potential, um, again, it's very similar to, I mean, people are familiar with the traditional financial markets, right? Um, I would assume that they're a little bit more accessible. Um, again, you know, mass media or, or um, international media sort of perpetuates that mm. um, because it's constantly covered in, in, in daily news. But you're now seeing that sort of shift uh, into discussions around the crypto market. Mm. Um, Yes, to a certain degree, a lot of the news is sensationalist. Um, we've seen this over the last few days. Uh, for those of you who've been following the sort of Terra Luna story. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, in the industry, you do have, um, again, it's, it's a very, very small minority. And you see the same thing in traditional financial markets as well. Um, and there are a couple of cowboy players. And that is something that, um, you know, we in, as an industry are trying to eradicate mm. um, to sort of provide that level of credibility. But in terms of the asset value, it's 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 exponential. Um, you're now seeing the advent of Gamify, which allows you to earn or play to earn. Mm -hmm. um, so you play games, you don't even you don't even realize that you're on the blockchain, uh, and you're earning rewards uh, as a result of playing some of your favorite games. Uh, you're seeing move to earn, um, and it's it's a case of sort of activating an application on your phone. 
um, accessing the blockchain, moving mm -hmm. around, and again, generating returns uh, and rewards just by moving around. Mm -hmm. um, so the opportunities um, and the value of the industry is, is, is boundless. Okay, and um, let's talk about the how they're valued. Um, sure. yeah. I mean, there's, uh, it, it, you can say it's the same, uh, you mentioned the Terra Luna story, for instance. Um, you know, there. I've been following on Twitter, for instance, that they, they out there. There's a lot of what they call economic hitmen, kind of people out <laughs> to just, um, you know, manipulate the markets. And because it's fairly uh, nascent and still new, yeah. uh, it opens that possibility. So maybe you can share about how 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 these guys uh, the, these value digital assets are valued. Um, again, digital assets could encompass a whole bunch or a whole plethora of terms. Mm -hmm. Right, you've got your cryptocurrencies, you've got your NFTs. Um, so there is, there's a whole bunch of different um, ways we can sort of look at digital assets. Um, if we're looking at crypto or crypto tokens, for example, cryptocurrencies, um, again, there's no singular metric um, to sort of identify the value of a mm -hmm. specific uh, project token. Mm -hmm. um, this is usually based on a number of different variable factors. Uh, so total value locked, market capacity. Scarcity uh, is, is also um, a sort of key pointer mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to assessing the value of a crypto asset. Um, and scarcity, what that basically means is there is a limited number of crypto assets available mm -hmm. uh, to users. Like uh, in, in Bitcoin, there's 21 million units. That's right. It can be broken down into Satoshis. Is that right? That's correct. Um, that's correct. But the number of whole Bitcoins is only 21 million, whereas that's opposed right. to currencies, which could uh, continue to be printed as as you know, money is needed, but that creates inflation. Anyways, yeah. we're going to wrap up a little bit. Um, so, I mean, yeah. scarcity is a big one, I would say. Scarcity and rarity. They were saying, I was reading again on the Twitterverse um, about how uh, the number of millionaires in the world, uh, there's not enough single whole Bitcoins for them. That's Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's absolutely so, true. Hypothetically, as the value of this currency increases yeah. and people want one whole rather than just a Satoshi, <laughs> um, we'll see the, the yeah, value we'll see. increase. Um, yeah. And I, I, for me personally, I would hope to see it uh, increase exponentially. Mm. Um, but again, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, scarcity and rarity is, is a sort of key factor. Um, there just aren't enough tokens in the world. Mm. Um, and then you've got things like marketing. Um, I mean, for those of you who are active on Twitter, um, Elon Musk is a, a you know, he's a, he's a big advocate of the, the crypto space. He's also very critical of the crypto space. Are you big on Twitter too, Kevin? Uh, I'm not that big no. on Twitter. No, we should follow you not. anyways. <laughs> please do. <laughs> yeah, please well. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you'll see a couple of good photos on there, but that's about it. It's mostly me out drinking uh, <laughs> late night somewhere. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, a single tweet from him could mm. sort of increase the value of a mm. specific cryptocurrency um, by 20, 30, 40, 50%. Mm. Um, so there are so many different variable factors uh, as to why or what sort of ascertains the value of a specific crypto would, project. Would you say that retail investors have this uh, never seen before bigger influence on value of digital assets as well, or any type of asset really? Um, the Without proliferation doubt. of information, you mentioned like Twitter, someone that's being followed by almost 100 million people can, can influence how Especially retail traders, right? Because they can they could trade faster or make decisions independently. Yeah. Um, how, how has that changed the whole game for valuations? I mean, it's been incredible, right? The advent of social media, the, the sort of whole Web two movement, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, um, and um, you know that the fact that users are a lot more active on there. You've got mm -hmm. these. Uh, opinion leaders and influencers who are actively supporting various projects because again um, they may have invested in these projects and they are they want to share uh, this with their audience base mm -hmm. um, to sort of help them facilitate the the, the ability to earn uh, from their investments mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's, it's been incredible um, community forms a you know a significant pillar uh, for a lot of these uh, blockchain and crypto projects mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you have you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people actively, um, you know, promoting uh, specific projects on uh, open forum platforms like mm -hmm. Reddit, mm -hmm. uh, crypto Twitter, uh, which is what we sort of consider the sort of crypto variant of Twitter. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, but mm -hmm. it's just people predominantly talking about crypto. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's 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 been a sizable seismic movement, um, and the community has a bigger role to play now than than ever before. Mm. Let's step aside from the retail trader a little bit. I think um, we, we know the story there. It's uh, an emerging group and community that uh, needs to be taken seriously. 
Let's talk about companies. Uh, companies are, are looking to invest from their uh, balance sheet or to protect, uh, diversify their investments. Um, some of them might be concerned about the security and preservation of these assets. Um, does Matrix, Matrix Port uh, specialize in that? And, and if so, how do they do that? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have a product called uh, Cactus Custody. Um, and it's a very innovative uh, sort of product that we've created. Um, backed by uh, sort of leaders in the cybersecurity space. Um, and what we enable is we, 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 we can protect uh, users' assets. This is where it gets, gets a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. So there are various custodial solutions um, out there in the market. Um, and there are various protocols or ways in which uh, companies can protect their own digital assets and investments. They could do a number of different things. So they can remove them from a hot wallet and put them in a cold wallet. Um, which is effectively taking them offline and putting them on a storage device. But again, what if you lose the access keys? Um, and for those of you who don't know, there are various phrases that you have to memorize mm. or uh, write down in a book. Please do not copy and paste them and put them on your computer or the same computer that uh, could be vulnerable to uh, you know any form of uh, cyber attack. Mm. Um, but uh, you know that's one way of protecting your assets, I guess, to a certain degree. But with Cactus Custody. Um, we use, uh, you know, very sort of high grade uh, security systems um, that are trusted, that have been built by uh, our team of former cybersecurity specialists, uh, people who have worked in the financial industries, who have worked for banks, uh, who have worked for various government units. Um, and it's, it, it sort of allows us to put in high grade uh, protection services for uh, institutions, institutional assets. Mm. Thank you for sharing, Cavi, about you know securing how uh, Matrixport approaches securing digital assets through the Cactus Custody product. Um, how does that differ, though, from other more traditional assets like stocks? Um, is it is it more advanced? Is it more innov innovative? Uh, how, how does that work exactly? I think to a certain degree, it has to be uh, more innovative because mm -hmm. again, uh, the crypto industry is still very much in its infancy it's seen a level of maturity mm -hmm. um, and you can almost sort of consider it in its teenage years. Mm. Um, but it, again, it's by comparison to the traditional financial markets, um, very, very new. Um, and as such, with the advent of new technology, um, with opportunist, opportunists and uh, bad actors in the mm. space looking to take advantage of any form of vulnerability, um, we do have to be very, very careful in terms of how we protect user assets. And, I, and I'm not talking about specifically matrix port or cactus custody, but I'm also talking about the industry in general mm. um, in order to protect user funds. Now, there's a number of things that users can do. I think I touched upon one of them earlier, and that is uh, taking your crypto assets offline uh, and storing them on a cold wallet. Mm -hmm. However, when you do that, you lose the opportunity to generate yield from them because they're not um, accessible um, on the blockchain at that particular uh, time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just recorded on there. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, we need to ensure that we're providing best in class security solutions mm -hmm. to protect all of our customers, um, financial or digital financial investments um, on the platform. Uh, and that's where Cactus Custody comes in. Um, in terms of the sort of key differentiators between uh, stocks and or any, any sort of traditional asset, traditional financial asset, um, when it comes to digital assets, I mentioned earlier, there are uh, opportunists and bad actors. Mm. Um, and a lot of the Ethereum-based projects uh, using uh, Solidity as the coding language, um, they're prone to things like human error. Uh, and that is a fact with any form of, you know, real coding. Um, and as such, you know, we've got to be very, very careful and diligent to ensure that um, when codes are under review, they are heavily scrutinized. Um, they are, we, we can sort of identify, you know, um, uh, white hat, uh, maybe even sort of gray hat uh, security specialists um, to try and find vulnerabilities in, in various code. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very proud of the uh, Cactus Custody solution. And, um, you know, uh, it's innovative in so many different ways by how or in the way in which it protects uh, our users' funds. Um, and I mentioned earlier the, 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 the sort of bad actors in the space. Um, no industry is vulnerable to that. Unfortunately, in the crypto space, you read more about it because there are so many smaller projects out there that are being developed by 
uh, some people who may not fully understand uh, where those vulnerabilities lie. Mm. And uh, the space absolutely demands more and more security mm. specialists mm. Um, and protection. Um, so because of that, it's, you know, it's potentially subject to more or higher uh, degree of market manipulation, uh, of um, uh, blockchain attacks. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, these are things that we have to be very, very careful about. So uh, we have a team in place and there's a whole, uh, there's a bunch of different companies that do this as well, um, that effectively review the coding on various blockchain projects, uh, or even on security uh, solutions and custodial solutions uh, to ensure that they are safeguarded mm -hmm. uh, to the best of their, their abilities. Okay. Yeah, you kind of answered my next question about potential risks like market manipulation or the lack of regulation. And it really comes down to um, retail institutional investors really researching who they're working with, putting their trust into. Uh, it could be on the project side, it could be on the company side, like a matrix port. Um, so it really comes down to, um, you know, well, one is doing the research, but hopefully the maturity of the industry evolves and um, well-run teams can can protect their users at the end of the day and, and customers. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you-, you It's no think different to any bank, actually. That's right, yeah, yeah, really yeah. Isn't, uh, <laughs> yeah. But with banks, you're always looking at the, the rates, mm. right? Uh, that's predominantly the, the sort of key focus. Mm. Uh, and inherently, there is a trust with banks. Mm. And that is something that the crypto market is now starting to build up. Mm. Um, I mean, you wouldn't sort of blink twice mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, at which bank you want to invest your funds mm. or open an account with. Mm -hmm. um, within the crypto space, you know, doing your own research, identifying, um, you know, the, the crypto assets or the digital assets that you want to purchase, um, the ones that you want to hold, mm -hmm. um, the ones you want to invest in. Um, I would 100% back that statement. Do mm. your research. Um, again, we mentioned this earlier before. Uh, so crypto Twitter, the social media space, um, there are a lot of people out there that that actively pump mm -hmm. uh, various projects. Mm. Um, and it's important not to get carried away uh, with that because you can start, uh, again, the way in which social media works, you click on one video, uh, the algorithm would kick in and it mm. would try and feed you more and more content mm -hmm. uh, similar to that piece of content that you've just viewed. But the first one that's not wasn't necessarily the best one. That well, exactly, watched. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, mm. but a lot of it would sort of, uh, you know, they'd use various keywords to, uh, identify what a viewer has seen mm. um, or is reading through and they will start pumping you more and more information along that uh, along those lines. Mm. Um, so it's not necessarily a good thing. It does, it gives you the ability to potentially learn more and take a wider breadth of information. But again, um, depending on the subject matter, uh, you could be seeing constant pump uh, mm. content. Mm. Um, so please, 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 anyone out there who is interested, do your own research, mm -hmm. um, have a look at the project fundamentals, um, there's a lot of people in the crypto space that are willing to, to sort of provide support and information. You know, a matrix port, we think education is is incredibly important. In fact, it's our priority pillar. Mm. Um, and it's something that we firmly believe in without providing sufficient education to, mm. uh, well, both retail and institutional, institutional investors. Um, it's very difficult to uh, advise them on the decision making process. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to ensure that uh, when they do uh, decide to uh, invest in any crypto uh, or anything in, in the sort of Web3 space, the DeFi space, the uh, digital asset realm, um, that they're making a choice that is um, that a decision that they are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah, I mean, uh, just as a side note on Vietcetera, our media networks, um, uh, throughout the last two years, as the retail investor really emerged, um, the thing is, Vietcetera, we have a considerably large um, a Gen Z and millennial audience. And uh, we saw that their reaction and engagement with any content we were putting out there related to personal finance was highest ever, and it continues to grow on a daily basis. You can see the numbers, and it's quite exciting. Um, and I think uh, we've been seeing more demand for that financial literacy, personal finance education. Um, and it's great to see you guys are committed to that as well, especially in a market like Vietnam, where, to be frank, there there is very little uh, content, uh, even before this whole retail investor explosion happened, um, <laughs> personal finance was, was still, um, quite fundamentally sparse. Um, but, uh, but I see the emergence of that happening. Uh, but for the, for those of you listening in today that are on the younger side or just curious about money, um, obviously, uh, do your research about where you're starting. Not all research is, is good, is good, excuse me, uh, or to be trusted. I think, um, you have to really start at a, at a good fundamental place. Um, check all your sources, um, and then when you find a couple, 
then you can go down the rabbit hole, hopefully. So um, great advice. Exactly. Um, so my next question is uh, the idea of, you know, the investments we, we, we talked about going, it goes up and it goes down. Right now we're in a bit of what you would call a bear market. Um, and and that, that term really uh, strikes fear into the hearts of many investors. Uh, tell us more about that term. Uh, there's also terms like buy the dip. This is an NFA <laughs> podcast though. NFA, if you don't know what that means, not financial advice. This is purely educational right now. Um, tell us more about what what is a bear market and how does one take advantage of it. And when I say take advantage, I don't mean like go buy right now, uh, but take advantage could mean, you know, uh, do your research, um, make sure you're ready to, to leverage on that position. Um, let's start, let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the bear market is basically the market moving sideways um, or faltering to a certain degree. Mm. Um, on the opposite side, you've got the bullish market or the bull market uh, where we're seeing significant increases. Um, so right now, the, the, the market is moving sideways. Uh, we're at that lateral, sort of lateral stage. Um, and this gives people the opportunity to sort of take a step back, uh, look at the opportunities. If you already own crypto assets, and again, just to be very, very clear, not offering financial advice. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for those who do have crypto assets, a lot of people are starting to shift them into, um, uh, you know, platforms where they can generate yield. Um, so you have long-term investors, you have short-term investors. Now, uh, very early on in this conversation, we talked about, you know, the markets can be very cyclical. Mm. Uh, and in the crypto market, we've seen this in, I think, 2017, 2018. Um, and a lot of the sort of big players in the industry, and I'm talking about the, the organizations, the companies, the innovative companies, um, were, were effectively born out of uh, the bear markets. Mm. Um, it's an opportunity for them to double down on R&D and create products um, that have longevity and really offer value uh, during these specific times. And I think, you know, it's very similar to, to Matrix or, or, you know, the, the vision uh, when the founders uh, initially created the company, mm -hmm. um, what they wanted to do, and that is unlock uh, and enable yield generation through your crypto assets or digital mm -hmm. assets. Um, so the, bear, uh, the you know, with the market being bearish right now, it's a good opportunity for people to sit back uh, conduct their research, have a look at where the opportunities lie. Mm. Um, again, you mentioned multiple sources earlier when you are conducting research, that is a invaluable point. Um, so never stick to a single source. There is mm. no uh, North Star or single point of truth. Um, it's always important to try and gather as much information as possible before you make any decision. Mm. Um, and then you mentioned buy the dip. Now, this is something that I personally um, am a big believer of. Mm. Uh, so I myself am a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, I have been a Bitcoin investor uh, for quite a while now. Um, and I buy into various projects building off the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so for me, this has been a great opportunity to, mm. to, to continue to buy because I do believe that the value uh, of Bitcoin is going to increase substantially. But again, this is just my view mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't want to sort of express that to you know anyone listening out there uh, today um, it's important to, to conduct your own research um, and then again during the bear market owning the asset itself uh, so very similar to, to the stock market right you own a specific asset um, you can generate a dividend or you'll be paid a dividend uh, on that asset um, but then you only own the value of that specific asset. Mm. Um, now with matrix port, you can apply that asset into one of our products, um, and generate yield, uh, through one of the various products. So that could be lending, uh, to institutions that could be, um, our dual currency currency products that allows you to, it allows you to enter, um, into a dual currency, uh, market and you will receive mm. returns, um, depending on the market price of those currencies, you receive, uh, one in return. Um, so when you mean yield, it's like, uh, to put it in the more Vietnamese terms, if I buy an apartment and rent it out, you're, you're going to get a, a rental. That's exactly amount. it. Exactly. That's exactly yeah, it. Okay. I, I don't know if it's the same thing here. Um, yeah, my parents used to tell me. So that instead of buying an apartment, you can buy <laughs> a yeah, digital yeah. asset. Digital assets. That's okay. exactly it. That's and, exactly what, it. What sort of yields are, are available right now to an investor? Um, I mean, they vary depending on the product utilization, mm -hmm. right? Um, so for fixed income, uh, we're offering up to 30%. Uh, APY, uh, when it comes to dual currency products, uh, it could be 70, 80, 90, depending on the, the currency pairing. Mm. Um, so the yield varies. Uh, again, a lot of these rates are relatively variable. Um, but again, it's a great opportunity for people to generate a passive income while they still own the, the, the crypto asset itself. Mm 
Um, and then when the market improves, uh, it's entirely up to them what they choose to do with it. Mm. Uh, again, for me, I've been utilizing these yield generating products for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's, you know, I'm a long term investor. Mm -hmm. um, that's always been the, the way I've seen the market. And at these times, more than ever, it's an opportunity for my crypto to work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, to, you know, as a follow up, um, what type of digital asset would you hold during the bear market? It sounds like, I mean, you're holding everything at the moment. You have to, <laughs> you have to be able to you know, be resilient during the ups and downs. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and again, this is very, very personal to me. Um, again, being a Bitcoin maximalist, uh, the majority of my uh, crypto holdings are Bitcoin. Um, however, I do own uh, a number of other digital assets in the space as well. So mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough to buy a, a fair few NFTs uh, very, very early doors um, by some very large community groups. Uh, simultaneously, you know, uh, thanks to, uh, we talked about this earlier, I think off, offline, uh, we were talking about the, uh, the airdrops. Mm. Uh, and there are so many projects out there that, uh, you know, offer various airdrops for, for various crypto tokens. Um, and some of them have performed quite well, some of them not so much. Um, but I still own those assets. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in the DeFi space as well, decentralized finance, um, I look at staking as a viable option. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever crypto assets I do have that enable staking or where I can stake those for a additional yield to sort of um, support the blockchain, um, I absolutely will do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my, my last question today too, and we'll, and we'll do a, a bit of an ending here, uh, Kavi, is given the unpredictability of the crypto market, what does FOMO behavior uh, work and investing mean and how to avoid that that feeling. So for those listeners that don't know what I am referencing to, FOMO, another Twitterverse term, means the fear of missing out. Um, you know, some of your colleagues who may have invested have kind of um, seen their their assets uh, multiply um, by many folds, not just double even in some cases, uh, but at the same time, they may have collapsed. Um, what is your suggestion, for especially the retail investors or even institutional, um, to know about this particular behavior in the markets and, and how to avoid it uh, in a negative sense? Um, yeah, so I think FOMO, you mentioned it, uh, you know, I think it, Netflix utilized it very well, right? Mm -hmm. um, when growing the business. Um, the fear of missing out on various pieces of content that mm. they were creating. Um, so in, in, in the financial markets, in the traditional financial markets and in the digital financial markets, um, FOMO is not always a good thing. Uh, and again, there is a negative connotation associated to the term FOMO. Um, we have seen an abundance of uh, new money flow into the industry, right? Um, when we think about the traditional stock markets, you think about your Warren Buffetts, you think about your your sort of huge high value uh, players in the industry who have made millions upon millions, if not billions, um, in the stock markets. Um, and it's not been as readily accessible to people around the world. Again, you know, uh, up until maybe 10, 15 years ago, you'd mm -hmm. had to go through very specific brokerage firms uh, in a lot of countries in the world just to access specific markets uh, in other parts of the world. Um, with the crypto space, it's it's almost like democratizing that the way in which users can generate or create value or purchase assets, digital assets um, on the blockchain. Um, and we've seen a lot of people earn a significant amount of money um, or generate wealth, let's put it that way, um, because of the value of their assets. Remember, it's not just about the the cash, uh, it's also about the, you know, the asset value. Mm. Um, and we've seen a lot more people do that. And because, uh, again, you mentioned it, you know, Gen Z's, millennials, um, these are people who are a little bit more uh, open to investing in the digital asset market. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a lot of friends, a lot of people that you follow online who have uh, generated wealth um, in, in the digital asset market. But it's important not to fall down that rabbit hole. It, there is no get rich quick scheme, right? And anyone telling you that there is a get rich quick scheme um, or has the, the trigger to the get rich quick scheme, again, please don't believe that. Um, they are trying to instill the notion of FOMO. Mm. Um, you know, we don't know how these people are um, working with various projects. Um, they might be incentivized in the wrong way and manipulating other people to, to exactly. benefit from that. Right? Exactly. So, um, you know, again, it's so important to do your own research, you know, um, you know, use your own sensibility to understand or, or you know, digest the content that they're creating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just be very careful, right? There is, uh, when you when you are investing in anything, and this can be applied across any investment that you undertake, 
we talked about do your own research, um, but only invest what you believe you can potentially afford to lose, mm. right? And now that sounds a little bit counterintuitive, um, but again, that's a piece of advice that I've sort of stuck with. Uh, and it's not my saying, uh, by all means, I think people have been talking about this for years and years and years and years. Um, but it's something that I abide by when it comes to my own personal investments. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a lot of uh, asset, digital asset projects, a lot of blockchain projects, a lot of crypto assets increase in value substantially. You know, uh, within a couple of hours, um, assets can increase by 1,000%, 1,500%. 2000% and you start working out those calculations. If I had put in $3, how much would that be to me now? Mm. And something as little as $3. Um, but again, it's important not to get carried away with that because these are, these are shots in the dark, right? We don't know where they're gonna stick. We don't know who they're gonna hit. Um, and again, just as fast as they go up, they can come down mm. and they could really sting you. So uh, again, we've said this multiple times, do your own research, have a look at the project. And when you're comfortable, and you feel fully comfortable in investing in something, that's when you take that leap. Thank you, Kavi, for, for sharing your insights on the industry and, and matrix support as well. I, I always like to finish every podcast with a very simple question. Uh, is matrix support hiring in Vietnam? I'm sure a lot of people are listening to this podcast have got their interest peaked about what you guys are doing. <laughs> um, are you hiring in Vietnam? Yes, we're hiring all over the world. Mm. Um, you know, it's a fantastic organization. Um, we are definitely trying to cultivate um, a new way of working in our space, mm. uh, catering to uh, both the institutional investor and the retail investor. So if you are interested, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, so one, one platform I am quite active on, and that is LinkedIn, okay. uh, yeah. ironically enough. No, me too, actually. <laughs> are yeah. you? Ironically enough. I think it's an underrated platform. Everyone it on really Twitter is. hates LinkedIn, <laughs> but then I use and I love it. Um, I'm also on Twitter though, but. Are you active yeah. on Twitter as well? Uh, not as much. Not, not as much. much. Yeah. I'm the yeah. same way. I should be a lot more active on Twitter and I am planning to be a lot more active on Twitter. Mm. Um, but for the time being, I, I seem a lot of my thought leadership stuff tends to go on to, to platforms like okay. LinkedIn. Mm. Um, but yeah, we are, we are hiring all over the world. If it's something that you're interested in, please reach out. Um, uh, you know, we're looking for, for people across various categories and, and, and specialisms. Mm. Excellent. Well, Kavi, thank you for joining the show. Um, it's been a pleasure learning about yourself, Matrix Board, the industry, what all these terminologies mean for the average retail investor. Um, uh, we look forward to having you on next time and uh, best of luck with everything that's happening with Matrix Port here in Vietnam. All right, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you to everyone listening in today. Thanks everyone for tuning in for another episode of Vietnam Innovators with Kavi. He's the VP at um, Matrix Port uh, for communications and marketing. Um, check it out, Matrix Port in Vietnam. They're hiring, they're, they're here um, doing cool stuff in the industry. We'll see you guys next time. Matrixport is one of the world's largest and most trusted crypto financial services with 10 billion US dollars in assets under management. It provides one-stop crypto services, including cactus custody, spot OTC, fixed income, structured products, and asset management. Headquartered in Singapore, Matrixport's mission is to make crypto easy for everyone, and its motto is get more from your crypto. The company holds licenses in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Switzerland, and serves both institutions and retail customers.